there are you know there's arguments for Vigar and for Vagar as well it, it's just a mess the English language is a mess I digress we've got to rise for this yeah and I love it right because when when we were just hitting on like keeping up something that that does get prior that does have the ability to to roam more aggressively keeping up with the rise priority I think makes a ton of sense you can see Weibo now uh looking very I wouldn't say down but looking very serious right not not as jovial knowing hey we got to come out with a win in this one gonna go back to on stretch that was a standout game one they were able to aggressively flash hook at level one and find an advantage from some from very early on so we're gonna see if on will be able to be the difference maker once again now for the side of omg you just go with the stock and standard aphelios lock in as i assume they will and then right they can they could round it out with a a support pick to answer you always could go with uh the tom kench still being open like game one there's Things like the Leona, which sure, again, it is like slightly unfavorable for in lane, but you're always going to have your job to do in terms of team fights. And yeah, Cold having a plethora of options available. So TKB and Hopper right now. I want to quickly talk about this uh, this Jinx as well, though, because the Jinx, to some extent, a bit of a takeaway from Abel. It's easily his most played at 11. But Wong Fong certainly knows slouch on the Jinx. He's only played five games of it so far this split, but has an 8.8 .8 KDA on this Jinx. When Huang Fong is on that Jinx, he will take over from that bottom lane. It's going to be the Leona for OMG to finish things out on the bottom side. And then SFM goes with this Viego once more. And he's, he's smiling, he's smirking. He knows how well he does on this pick. It's just when we've highlighted that for Weibo really has been a lot about their skirmishing and their team fighting. Uh, I think going back towards the Viego makes a lot of sense. Now coming to the second phase of bands, I was expecting them to put more of a focus on jungle, but no, wanting to take Shanji off of some, again, just more comfortable blind pick champions. I wonder if they'll pay respect to something like the Aatrox this game. Yeah, we'll have to see Renekton and Nar found a way. And I'm curious if it is just going to be more top lane bands. No, they're swapping over, going towards the jungle here. SFM, just make sure he doesn't have to deal with Aki Shinjao. Uh, and then over to OMG. He could just go for a second top lane ban here, I guess. Or maybe take something else away from Angel and try and remove some comfort. Yeah, so for Angel right now, right, the picks that, that come to mind when you think about facing Rise are obviously the Orianna and the Vicar, uh, do, both doing quite well in the isolated 1v1. We haven't seen a lot of the more aggressive options that come out against Rise lately. Things like the Cinder TF has been open. This has just been banned against Weibo so much. It completely blanks from my mind whenever it is uh, able to be picked by them. And we're going to get it. We're going to get Angel's Twisted Fate. Angel, I think, has... Even though Angel has, I think, a lot of different champions he, he's a stand on, obviously things like Akali uh, very much come to mind. The Galley, which was banned away. TF always has a place in my mind when Angel comes onto the Rift. Yeah, I mean, the twist of fate has been banned against Weibo 75% of their games, right? They've played 24 games of LPL. It's been banned three quarters of the time. Angel will have that. He has the comfort. <laughs> Are you okay, buddy? I don't know what is happening within the OMG squad right now, but it is hilarious, apparently. Yeah, they... I mean, they're going to get back on some of their comfort picks, right? Obviously, the game Aki just had on Graves was phenomenal, but we were hitting on Shanji's champi pull and which picks he looks best on. I think Gragas has definitely been one of them. Having the setup in all of their lanes is time in regards to CC for the damage that the Graves is able to bring out. And now for Weibo, I wouldn't be surprised for this to be locked in. You have the Twisted Fate. You want to play heavily up towards the Shy to be able to get him ahead. Your bot lane will be able to survive and farm in that 2v2 and just scale up just fine. So... I like that both teams did opt into side laning for Weibo. They should definitely be able to transition into like a three lane setup later on for OMG. You're going to have that strong rise that will be able to contend with some of these picks if he's able to get ahead, but definitely OMG playing a lot more towards a one, four, or even just straight up five V five composition with right. Two tanks, a bunch of DPS in the back line. So different flavors coming out in this draft, which will be cool to see, especially for Weibo because Weibo have, Again, been opting a lot more for the tanks up top, and they've been the ones pretty much exclusively playing these hard front-to-back 5v5 team compositions. Yeah, it feels like kind of a bit of a switcheroo, right? But between game number two and game number three here, where a lot of pressure towards that top side from Weibo. Or if it's execute on it will be the different question, but 
And so, Fem, like you were pointing out in game number two, happy to focus on the top side, even when the draft doesn't necessarily lean towards that. So, Fem's still been on the top side of the map. Aki on this Graves, I think, is going to be a thorn in SOFM's side, right? We've seen how well Aki played last game. Now, game number three. I feel like the pressure will be on him and Cream once more to try and stop what Weibo are trying to set up for themselves. But as we head towards the rift, it's Weibo and OMG going the distance here. OMG looking for an upset against literally the top team in the LPL right now. Yeah, uh, for OMG, this would be huge, considering they're trying to cement themselves as one of the teams to contend in playoffs. Yeah, OMG right now sitting at 5-6. and six. They are currently holding that 10th place spot. It also would shake up the standings for other teams, right? Teams like EDG and LNG being on two wins. V5 suddenly would uh, just cement themselves as the first place team. And pretty much every uh, spot in standings means something in terms of, like, playoff buys, right? Uh, top one and two going straight into the double Elin portion of the bracket. Three, four, you know, getting an extra round in playoffs. And then five, six. So, OMG upsetting here affects absolutely everyone. It really does. This will shake the league up very dramatically if OMG are able to do it. But they've, uh, they've got a long time ahead of them before they'll be in a position to try and find an upset, right? With a rise and an Aphelios, it does feel like this is a, a slower style of composition. But that said, you know, Cream can certainly make plays with the Realm Warp, get out of that mid lane and try and influence the map. I feel like that level six point is going to be crucial for both mid lanes. Yeah, I actually expect these teams to be playing around very similar windows. Uh, you know, for Aki, you're on the Graves, you're going to carry jungler. Getting to your item points as quick as possible, I think, is extremely important. So, again, could just opt to go for a full clear. But the fact that we are hitting on, right, you have the root in mid lane. You have the body bop coming up from Shanji in top side. The Leona and bot, you really do have set up in all three lanes. If Aki wants to look for anything a little bit cheeky to try and start finding uh, an early spike. And then at level six, when both comps we know are going to be looking for these aggressive plays once Realm Warp and the Destiny are available. So I feel like whichever team is willing to find the successful play first is going to be able to control the state of the map going forward uh, for the next few minutes. As well, because what we've seen so far in this series is whoever is able to wrestle control in the mid game just takes over. We haven't seen any kind of comebacks. We've seen like once somebody gets a significant hold on the game, they win the series. Right? <laughs> we haven't seen who wins the series just yet. You know, just just hitting on that real quick. I feel like it's because we've seen both teams. Uh, Again, with their lead, being able to play well. Heck, even OMG in game one when they were behind, they were cross-mapping quite a bit and, like, keeping gold actually slightly ahead the whole time, despite the fact that even in game one when Weibo were behind, it felt like they were in control uh, of the game. So I feel like both teams have shown some, like, pretty solid map play uh, in regards to, like, their macro when they are able to be even or find leads. Obviously, when behind, both have uh, shown they are very much willing to go of the mindset of, hey, we're behind. How do we get back into the game? Ah, screw it. Let's just force a fight. So that's what you can expect if either team falls significantly behind. Yeah, it certainly is. And, uh, I mean, honestly, that's kind of what you can expect from Weibo anyway, as far as we've seen in this series. On wants to make a play in the mid lane, though. Angel waiting for that gold card to be available. And looks like On is just going to move up to try and help his jungler. But instead, OMG already got the crap. Now a gold card chained in this mid lane. Cream still has splash available. Doesn't need it because the phase rush. It's actually On who takes the most damage. Yeah, and this was a coordinated map movement by the side of Weibo. Because you get the bot lane as well. They, they got the push in and bot. They've seen Quan Fong's reset up to get the call, which gives on the window to move towards mid and secures both scuttles for the side of Weibo. So nice to see them, uh, again, coordinate as a team across the map. It also allowed the Shy to just continue to play aggressively this whole time in top side because you do have three members strong on the top side of the map as well. Shy taking a hefty trade there from Shanji. Nicely played. By the rookie top laner. I will just mention, uh, it almost got them the double skull. SOFM actually lost the smite against Aki. Aki was able Ooh. to get the, the top scuttle, but it, it almost worked. It almost worked beautifully. <laughs> yeah. But either way, the gank doesn't work onto Cream, and that's a, a key factor as Cream teleports back into lane now with a tier, a ruby crystal, as well as his pot. And Shanji <laughs> finds a solo kill onto the shy. That is gorgeous. Yeah, I love it. He commits the flash to be able to finish off that kill. The Shy even taking phase rush in this matchup to try and be able to kite out those interactions so it doesn't get locked down. 
just playing too aggressively, right? We saw in that former uh, previous trade, him losing so much HP in return. And that's what Shantos wants to be looking for, right? As the Shy, you pretty much want to try and find these extended, uh, you know, poke trades. To where for Shanji, it's all about these small windows where you just get a ton of burst off. Also having the Arcane Comet. So, does, is able to secure the stun. Then flashes in, finishes that off. And nice start for the side of OMG. Yeah, really good stuff from OMG. And, and great to see Shanji once again. Nothing cheesy about that. Nothing ridiculous about that. This is a standard pick. And he's just outplayed the Shy 1v1. What a statement from Shanji, who has been having such a great first year. And I started to worry that we'd all got a bit too excited about Shanji. He had some really good games to start the year off and had a couple of pretty rough games for himself. But it feels like the, the good games were actually the real story. Is the Shy almost getting knocked under the tower there? He's having a rough time of it. Yeah, the Shy wanted to force that one in, though. Get the wave back in an even state because SFM is up around this top side. But Shanji so far is paying respect. Doesn't have his flash, doesn't have the cast. So if SFM can get in here, they should be able to kill. Destiny's up. Destiny available. Angel hovering with the idea of going for a Destiny, but I think the trigger will be not pulled. Will not be pulled. Able just takes us back on this bottom side, and Aki is hovering around this bottom lane right now. Mon is cautious, he's very far ahead right now. The play is good against the Zenith play, but I don't think this is going to save him. Wonfong will get out with his life, but on accepts his fate. A kill given over to Abel here, winning on both sides of the map so far from the side of OMG. Good stun from SOFM, but realistically, there's just no damage. Yeah, and, you know, I really feel like uh, Weibo making a misstep there with their bot lane, right? Because one thing that's very evident when you look at these drafts is that OMG know what Weibo are going to do. I mean, you have Jinx Rush and bot side, you have uh, TF Jace as your top side duo, right? So, of course, they're going to constantly hover from these plays. So the second you see Angel lean into Fog of War, Shanji knows to play safe. And then Weibo's bot lane trying to play aggressively at the same time. You know Aki isn't up towards the top lane with all the resources you've committed up there. Should be towards that bot lane. But still, the fact that On's fishing for those hooks just easily sets up Aki for the play. So, I feel like a bit of a misstep by Weibo. And just nice read by OMG. Again, though, it is very obvious what Weibo's comp will be looking to do. But still, nice that OMG's not falling prey to it. Finding their advantages on the opposite yeah. side of the map. I mean, let's be real. There's been plenty of ob obvious compositions in the LPL before. And it's never stopped teams falling for it. So... Good to see OMG respecting it. And again, intelligent play coming out from OMG. That's the thing I'm most excited about is they've kind of changed their identity from last year, right? Last year, OMG, it was like, okay, do we have an insane dive composition with Kaiser with an assassin for green? If yes, we win the game. If no, well, we do. That's not the same team anymore. Just a couple of roster changes has meant that now this is an OMG that genuinely has to be feared by the top teams. This is an intelligent OMG that drafts win conditions, that understands their opponents with them. Yeah, OMG are definitely a team that, like, I, I feel like they're represented decently well in the standings in terms of, like, right, OMG are, like, the gold standard of, like, a mid-tier team in the LPL. But they're also a team that, if we get the playoffs, I'd be very afraid of playing in a best of five because of... I feel like they have like certain uh, areas where they're very strong. Things like team fighting, things like uh, like level of player quality. When you look at like mid, and especially Shanji coming this time around, so having some strengths that they can just take over against any team, and they're going to use those strengths to be able to secure the drift barrel, bringing their bot lane up. So Juan Fong and On are getting some free time with that turret and bot side. Uh, SFM just going to go for a spike oh, contest, and he actually gets it. Flashes out of the pit as well. Doesn't get the eye of the herald, but. I mean, you know, why not? That's a why win. Not? No. Overall, I think that's great. Like, sure, you you lost your old and you lost your flash, but you have now spent the time bringing your bot lane up, losing farm, losing tempo, and uh, and Huanfeng and On just get so much in return for this. I actually thought that was really smart coming out from SOFM, and with that time wasted and the CS missed for Able and Cold, OMG are just like screw it. We're gonna commit our bot lane to this top side. This is so nice from SOFM. Gossip is smite, as you say, but I don't think he minds at all. And now moving up to this top side to make sure that the Shy can farm and safely farm that top lane. Morfong just gets to continue hitting away on this tower. Shanji struggling to defend by himself. Obviously has to go for that Everfrost first item. Dark Passage available. Morfong will be fine. Another attempt from Shanji. You've got to try and make the cast plays when you can. 
Yeah, tries to look for it. In the meantime, OMG, we're trying to look towards mid. Aki just hovering around so Dream can push out freely. They're going to look for the play. Oh, well, that's going to be the Flame Chompers. A great dark passage and a hook as well. It is gorgeous from On. Is he going to survive the Scorch? Isn't enough. Way for one outplay. Yeah, really nice uh, use of those chompers coming out from Quanfong to lock Aki down. Supreme, the only one able to aggressively walk forward and get damage down. Also, buy space for the Shy to, to whittle down this turret topside. Should be able to get himself another plate as well. Right now, sitting about 20 CS up. Quanfong sitting CS up because of the rotation we saw from Abel and Cold towards that Rift Herald. So overall, despite the fact that OMG have been the ones finding the kills and finding the picks, just kind of this one sequence of events uh, completely flipping the script in favor of Weibo. We see SOFM come in, just gets in there, gets the smite down. They try to turn so Aki doesn't smite. And again, sure, he has to burn Flash and Ultimate, but I really feel like it, it benefited his side laner so much in that play. It really did. Beautifully done, once again, by SOFM. And now, despite the early solo kill from Shanji, despite the kill on the bottom side as well, that Abel managed to get for himself, it is Weibo with a gold lead, and it's Weibo that will be getting this first Drake of the game. At 11 minutes, very late start for stacking those Drakes. Regardless, Weibo have found themselves an advantage in a game that honestly looked like it was going to start going the way of OMG. And you have to assume that <laughs> on the side of OMG, the comms less jovial than they were just 10 minutes ago. Okay, so Colt's ultimate comes out. One thing I'm actually going to play aggressively to try and break this turret down, especially once we start breaking down first turrets, right? That's where we're going to see uh, lane allocations change, and Weibo especially going to be able to pivot into this 1-3-1, so I think that will be massive for them when, again, they have two uh, soul laners who feel very comfortable sitting in a side lane and can get pressure. Sure, Cream will be able to find pressure if he is in a side lane against Angel, but the Shy uh, will be able to out-pressure Shanji. Then you look for those rotations towards mid, so... I feel like this will be massive for Weibo once they do break this one down and start moving into that lane allocation. It certainly will. I just want to quickly point out as well that we are still on 12.2. I know uh, LEC is on 12.4, and uh, I'm sure a lot of people are thinking of this Twisted Fate being the pretty heavily nerfed Twisted Fate. This is not. This is 12.2 Twisted Fate, so this is, I believe... We're not even going to experience 12.3. It's going to go straight to 12.4 at some point. That happened soon. I'm kind of kind of bored of this patch at this point. I've cast it for well, we've been 12.2 for the I was majority say, let's of this. Let's be real. Split. Oh, okay, oh, nothing. Takes a bit of a hit. He actually goes over the wall, flashes forward to stun on. They're just gonna focus the support. If they'll save one bong every time, then instead we'll just go for the savior. As <laughs> so of them, little aggro in the mid lane has to be said. Strange use of the ulti, but good pick for OMG. And I wonder if Juan Fong and On and Angel and SOFM were on different wavelengths, right? Because the fact that On not only hooked, but also like lanterns Juan Fong in kind of sets up to me that they were looking for an aggressive play. Angel did have Destiny, but instead SOFM and Angel choose to go in for a play on the mid lane. So again, maybe different ideas of what to do here. We do we do see Cream actually zoning uh, Angel off. So I think that's what they're going for, right? On and Hunfong trying to set up for the aggressive play, knowing that Angel can follow, and then SOFM's coming in as well, but Cream zoning him off, sets up for SOFM and Angel to turn on to him. It's another play! Yeah, now they get to go for their aggressive play. Bit of revenge onto Cold. So it'll be SOFM to grab that kill for himself. And uh, they won't get too much off of the back of this one. Drake obviously not up on the map in a minute. Another minute until that Herald comes up as well. But even still, a nice little pickup for the side of Weibo. They can maybe pressure down in the bottom side. In fact, go for a dive onto this poor, lonely Abelios OMG moving over. Realm Warp actually going to come on through. As Abel tries to start a fight onto Wampong, but the uh, Dark Passage will just get him out to safety. SOFM doesn't quite win the smite fight with Aki this time. In fact, it wasn't even a smite. Still, the fact that OMG are making these plays but not finding anything, look at mid. Angel having free time with mid lane turret. This is how uh, Weibo have been stacking up this, this 1k gold lead. From the fact that OMG have been making these plays, not finding anything, and then whatever laner from Weibo is, is left with uh, nothing is like, cool, I'm just gonna uh, deny you a wave, take more uh, like turret plates, obviously not now because it's past 14 minutes, but earlier, and even just whittle down these turrets more. So I feel like Weibo just benefiting a lot from the fact that OMG's uh, 
aggressive plays aren't paying off. Yeah, definitely the case. And, and doing a good job of understanding what OMG is trying to do, right? That, that's the thing. We talked about OMG understanding this Weibo comp and, and how they want to play and playing around that. Well, it's kind of similar for, for Weibo right now. Every single play that OMG tries to set up, it feels like Weibo have a read on it. And obviously a bit of miscommunication in that jungle, uh, as you talked about when uh, On got caught out. But aside from that, I just feel like both teams Comparatively to last game, especially, this is a very conservative game of League of Legends. <laughs> nice respect by on kind of keeping up with, again, being, being more conservative, not just willing to walk in and give all those picks that you were giving over last game. And now we're seeing the 1 3 1 that we talked about coming out from Weibo, breaking down that first turret, being like, cool, we can put our, our bot lane in mid because they should be able to guarantee pressure if they have both laners there. As we see right now, on is in mid lane, so of course, Able and Cold can push. And you could start making those uh, those rotations to either side of the map. Looks like they are warding aggressively uh, for bot side, the Shy getting his own vision. So you can opt to playing around the Shy, especially with Dragon coming up in 15 seconds. Dragon up in 15, and uh, Weibo... With control of the bottom side for now, but Aki is in the area too. Uh, the bottom lane is trying to get control of mid. Remember, Aki has the Herald too, so perhaps a way to levy control of the mid lane to try and get onto the straight bottom side of OG. They now push into the river as a four-man squad, trying to get vision control themselves. Or in fact, just to start this straight off, as offense is moved to the top side instead. Looks like OG will even things up in terms of those strikes. It will be another cloud song. Yeah, Weibo. Kind of surprised they, they opted for the gold trade. They don't feel confident looking for a fight right now. I think as the game goes on, OMG's comp should be favored in team fights. Uh, you just kind of look at, at Weibo, right? Not really having too much of a front line. Again, a lot of single targets. You see coming out is... OMG, trying to play aggressive. Nice cross for a second there. Dodges the solar flare. Uh, but it will be the Herald going down in the end. So just a tier one trade across the map, right? Angel getting the tier one in the top lane. And OMG using the Herald to finish off the tier one mid. Yeah, now we're going to see Wave go back to what we were hitting on before, right? Kind of setting up for the aggressive push coming out from the Shine bot lane. As well as making his way over. Shaji should be fine. He does have Flash and the Cask still up. Won't even need it. Gucci. Gucci gang. Uh, walks away. Very good. Now we kind of reset. This has been a very slow pace of game comparatively to the rest of the series. And comparatively to a lot of OMG series, right? They generally have been quite an aggressive team in terms of just forcing things in the early game. And while we have seen attempts on both sides, like you said before, both teams doing a good job of trying to play around their opponents, trying to play around uh, the potential all-ins and, and doing, a job, uh, doing a good job of surviving them as well. Almost a 2,000 goal lead now. River of Weibo is on. We'll find Aki in this brush. The attempt to dive, oh, I think, yeah. stopped in its tracks here. <laughs> on just hex flashing right in the face of Aki. Yeah, and I feel like hitting on that, right? On has just been so proactive in terms of, like, being somewhere oh. first. Now proactively walking into cold. You can't play the flash Q, that's for sure. Aki finishes that kill off. And just as we're praising on for being proactive, understanding what his opponents are doing, they read him like a book. Yeah, and I'm not sure if On thought that Cold was probably hovering down towards Shanji, covering him, because if not right, you see both AD carries solo contesting the wave in mid. You see Aki playing up towards top side. I feel like it's a, a fair assumption to assume that Cold should be around waiting in the wings as well, but still takes a rather, rather a greedy path back towards that mid lane. Yeah. I'm not even sure if it was just to pass the mid lane. It looked like he was trying to get a ward in River just by himself, which, uh, again, both greedy applies, whichever one he was going for. Is, uh, he just walks on over. Uh, so close to spotting Aki with that, by the way. So very close. He just had a slightly different angle on the Scryer's Blue. It's a different story. Yeah, again, I, like, you just have to kind of think of what On was thinking there, right? Because you just saw Aki in top tribe rush. You know your top laner's pushing in bot. So, I mean, there's only two choices. Either you think Cold's hovering around protecting Shanji, where the Shy didn't have the wave fully pushed in, or you should know that Cold is top. So, I think a bit of an oversight coming out from him. Uh, we are getting close. Actually, we're pretty much hitting the two-item mark across the board for most players. We do see Huanfang already having the rapid-fire cannon compared to Abel only being on that BF sword, though. So, you know, in one minute, 30 seconds, we'll see if Weibo 
finally feeling more comfortable in terms of opting for a fight, or if they just want to go for the full side lane style. Because you do have TFJs. I think that is what these champions lend themselves more to, finding picks and using tempo from your side lane push. And also with how slow the Drakes have been so far this game, like, playing 1-3-1 one one is fine. Like, the biggest issue with playing side lanes over the last couple of years has been that Drakes force you to go into those 5v5s later on, but Drakes being delayed certainly does lend towards being able to play the side lanes, but Ryze and Gragas, no slouch in the side lanes themselves. Ryze especially will be able to uh, find opportunities there. Gragas just going to be doing a good job of staying safe under the towers. The explosive cask makes it very difficult to die. Yeah, so that's kind of the key thing, right? Because Cream will be able to win out in the 1v1 against Angel if Angel ever, you know, his head gets a little too big and thinks he can go for that. But still, the amount of pressure that the Chai will be able to put up on the opposite side will be huge. As we're seeing right now on the bottom right-hand corner of our screen. Does he go for the cat? He does, but just a little bit uh, over to the right. So is it hit under turret? <laughs> Shanji's had a lot of attempts this game. None of them have really worked out, but I like that he's the spunk to look for it. I feel like that's just the nature of Gragas, though. I feel like players get bullied when they lock in Gragas because they don't hit every cask, but it's a very difficult ability to consistently hit, especially against pros that are expecting it. Like, I feel like there's a there's a too great an expectation there is Cream TPing from the top lane to the mid lane here, just for Drake coming on up. Doesn't go for reset in between, though, and actually just gets hooked immediately. A Zap pop through as well. As Weibo try and contest some of this vision, but I don't think that they're going to contest this Drake. It doesn't look like it's kind of dead. They do have Destiny, so it doesn't matter if they don't have vision. They can get it very easily. No, you're right. They they do rotate Angel over, though, so they kind of posture it for a contest, but opt into not finding one. Great run walk here as well to protect the mid lane tower from OMG. And the team that we've been talking about doing well on the macro, now getting out macro, but Shanji on the front line is going to be stunned up. Great hook coming out from On as well. It's a 5v5 in the jungle here for the Moonlight Vigil from Angel to start things off. Angel knocked away, but oh, Wombong is just free firing. <laughs> I'm dying apparently mid team fight. As, uh, <laughs> it's going to be a 2 for 1 for Weibo. I think I just nearly died. Yeah. I also feel like an important thing, right, is when you're trading one for one, but Weibo are the team with the Viego, that's always going to just feel so nice getting the reset on the ult. So Weibo able to make use of that one, put a bit more pressure down on this turret, and they're going to be able to solidify it. So another turret going over the side of Weibo. They already have Angel pushing out in that bot lane as well, answering waves. So gold still extremely close. Weibo able to come out with a bit of the gold lead, but OMG able to pick up the dragon. Sorry about that, everyone. Uh, a bit of saliva decided to jump into the back of my throat mid team fight apparently let's take another look to shanji get caught out originally yeah they, they do go for the pick and at the same time on landing the hook uh onto cream gets him incredibly low and we do see again one ever going over each sfm able to finish off cream gets him the reset they're just able to continue going forward forcing aki off back extremely early which i feel like at this point in the game aki is one of your big damage dealers right going towards yeah. Lethality Graves. Yeah. Okay. No, Lethality Graves, not the greatest scaling ever, but certainly is going to pack a punch at the time being. And we're a long way away from it falling off dramatically. Still, gold lead in favor of Weibo right now. It does feel like slowly but surely trying to wrest the control back. Certainly a good fight for them, but it's still very evil. Right? There's a belly of two items with Bloodthirster. Okay, he's going to be able to do a good job during these team fights. On might be caught here. Does have his flash available. Has to flash the cask. Nicely done there to stop Shanji finding the pick. Yeah, I mean, he originally sidestepped the body slam. Uh, right, if he got hit by the body slam, Shanji could have guaranteed the cask, and then everything would have been doomed. So nice, nice sidestep by on to be able to get away, but still nice from OMG to be able to get a summoner. And now for the side of Weibo, you expect him to just commit the shy back down towards that bottom lane, but... Looks like they're being very respectful of the top side. Is right now the shy just kind of hovering around mid just in case anything happens. Just in case, but it's not going to happen. And we have seen such a dramatically different game number three compared to the rest of the series. And I think Sooning perhaps Sooning, <laughs> Weibo, perhaps um, regretting their attitude to game number two. Because let's be honest, game number two it did not feel like they were playing the most serious League of Legends that they've ever played. And now in game number three, it feels very even, and it feels like Weibo are having to try their utmost 
just to maintain this even game against OMG. And that's a, a scary position to be in. But Shanji now getting caught out on the bottom side. Everfrost available for Angel. Shanji doesn't get to play the game. Just locked up forever as the Shy now jumps in with the damage. Finishes the kill off. Aki here is trying to answer, but a great exhaust. It means that he can't get the damage out. Well played by Wave. And this is a play I really love to see that I feel like we don't see enough, even when champions like TF, Rise, Galio, uh, whenever they come into the meta, is again committing both your soul laners down to a side lane to find a pick, because you you do have one with the global to be able to easily react on the opposite side of the map as well. So nice by Wavo to make that play, look for it, find a pick, and then transition all this pressure onto the mid lane turret. And look, look at bot side as well. The Shy gonna get some free time with that bot lane turret, so Wavo hitting everything right now while SOFM just waiting to see if anyone tries to transition down to answer the Shy. But yeah. OMG won't do that. They will just cover mid and the Shy should be able to get this and there it is. An extra turret going over the side of Weibo. So again, Weibo have been opting into the gold trades over the dragons earlier on. That is paying off for them starting to snowball this one massively. Now for the side of OMG, we're going to see if a Abel being 2-0 on the Cephalios in these team fights, he can find anything, but man, he's 40 CS down and like ha half an item behind Wonfong, who already has the IE and the Rapid Fire. Yeah, let's just take a second. Wonfong, oh, let's let's look at the replay and then we'll talk about Wonfong's CS. Uh, but yeah, it's kind of crazy right now. Shanji, just over Sefing, honestly. Yeah, not not you know paying respect to the fact that this play is available this is why i was talking about just you know a minute before this play happened of like i expect Weibo to go back to side lanes when they were just hovering around mid because you always have the potential of looking for something like this uh angel getting the wave to about a yeah. neutral place before he started to move down so i just want to quickly mention this cs deficit in that bottom side right we're talking about able being 40 cs down able's still on 10 cs a minute Bob Funk is on 320 CS at 26 minutes into the game. That's kind of nuts. That's kind of insane from Bob Funk as the second Drake is taken out by Weibo. But great positioning from them. Be able to threaten a denial on this Baron at the same time. On coming from the face, there's only three members of Weibo here for the time being destined to use. There's a lot being used onto Cold here. And Angel into enemy territory. We're going to see a flip for the Baron. is taken by OMG. Can they get the fight though? Is into the pit they go. It's going to be GA popped already. For the side of SOFM, flashes out of the pit. Now health bars low for OMG. Hook goes wide. Weibo can keep on chasing this one. Wild cards in. Cream has to flash away from this one. They need to get some resets off. They need to get the recalls out. But Angel over the wall finds Abel and takes him down. OMG realm warping supposedly to safety. But where have they actually gone to? Further into the jungle. SOFM wants to try and stop these recalls. He needs to be cautious to go for it by himself. That's two recalls out. But Aki found, looks like he'll be the sacrifice for two players to get out. Yeah, overall, Weibo pick up some kills still, though. OMG able to, to secure Baron on two members in a game that really felt like it was falling out of their hands. So, overall, like, in isolation, I feel like the trade does, like, favor Weibo. I don't think OMG should be able to get too much off this Baron. Luckily, it is still on Cream, who, again, is able to win in his side lane matchup. So... Maybe you can get something done off that, but off the back of those kills, one can gonna be able to pick up another turret. Really nicely done here, and it's a uh, 4,000 gold lead in favor of Weibo right now, but look at the items. Just, I was gonna mention it before that fight, we just didn't have time. Three items on Angel, three items on Huan Fong as well. Three items on the Shy. It feels like Weibo's composition is spiking incredibly hard right now. Yeah, and we're going to go back to the Baron. OMG, just they just made the call to say, hey, again, we're, we're starting to fall behind. We need to find this. We do see Aki be able to secure the smite with the fact that SOFM goes in. The GA does get burned. And Weibo not wanting to overcommit because they don't have that frontliner, right? They don't have someone who can easily just find the engage. They do bring Angel around behind with the Destiny. And then Angel <laughs> flashing in to follow Cream. Lucky for him, Abel is sitting right there. Juan yeah. Fong gets excited. They're able to chase down a few more kills, and everything works out a little bit better for Weibo than it could have. I'm not going to lie. I thought he had vision on Abel. I didn't realize that was just Abel being a little too greedy with his recall on that one. But I want to quickly mention something that's happening on the top side of the map. He's got a huge CS lead in favor of Aki in the jungle. A look to that top lane. This shy, 290 CS against 223. He's got five kills as well. Shy is having a whale of a time on this Jason Shaw. He got solo kill earlier on in this game. That one kill that Shanji has, that was a solo kill against the Shy. He stepped too far forwards and got punished. But ever since that point, the Shy has been firing on all cylinders. Yeah, now uh, 
The Shy able to group up, kind of lay down this siege, right? A ton of uh, range coming out from both Shinx and Jay. So I like that they're playing this out through two lanes. And we were hitting on 4MG with the Baron, like, Cream would be able to win uh, his push and his matchup, but with the amount of pressure that Weibo are putting on the map, not even able to go up there and, and look for that split push because then the other members of OMG will be overwhelmed, then Weibo would probably just be able to find themselves in the So ultimately, in the end, not going to be able to find anything out from that Baron. If there's any good side to picking it up, it's the fact that it's not on the map now. So at least Weibo can't look for a play where they tried it, where if they find a pick, they could set that one up. So, you know, there's a, there's a silver lining somewhere. Yeah, somewhat of a silver lining, but uh, it doesn't feel that good for OMG right now. Kind of interesting position, getting some deep vision before this Drake comes on through and both will reach up. Well, I think they'll get away with it as well. So nice little uh, vision mission from the side of OMG to get some deep wards before the Drake comes up because it will be up in a minute's time. And after that last fight, I'm not super confident that OMG can really find this one. No, I mean, it's going to be a hard one, right? They're going to have to find their way onto... It's hard to say. The Shy and Huan Fong are both massive. Heck, even Angel, which, uh, you know, even though mid lane TF, you know, with the build that you do go as TF, isn't like the highest amount of damage. I mean, he's still almost full build. He's still going to be hitting hard if he is able to get on the likes of Abel. Heck, even, even Shanji not being that tanky. So I think the hardest part for OMG is target selection here. Because, like, sure, you take out Huan Fong. The DPS is then gone. That's still probably your best bet if you can find a way to get a cast on him. But the Shy's Accelerate Shot Class are going to hurt. They certainly are. And just take a look at the scoreboard right now. SOFM's G8 is about to come off cooldown as well. So for this Dragon Fight, that might well be available. Weibo needs to just wait a few seconds before fighting. So SOFM will have that tool available to him towards the river. Go OMG, but look at the health bars already. The Shy doing so much work before the fight ever begins. And now SOFM with GA. We saw this at the Herald, and we might just see it at the Drake as well. Able to go over the wall with the Destiny. They can see the Drake, but she doesn't commit to this one. Once the team fight's dead, Realm Warp gonna come on through. It takes three people out of the fray, but it means that these carries are sacrificed, and Angel has a Zonyas, so he keeps himself safe. Three get out from OMG, but they do get the Drake. And now for Weibo, they can just turn towards mid. They already have the Shy pushing out bot. They should be able to look for an inhibitor off this play. Huanfeng will be able to, to lifesteal back up a little bit. And overall, like, cool, OMG, you got the Dragon, you're on soul point. But ultimately, again, it, it is a Cloud Soul, which, you know, maybe undervalued. Doesn't give you combat stats, and the Gage comes in. Oh, he's already gone cold. No way to survive this one. And a hook on to Cream as well on doing such a good job on this Thresh as usual. We see him on the Thresh and it, it always looks fantastic. The Shy stepping forwards, looking for a little bit more damage onto this in here. And I don't know, if, if nobody contests him, he'll just finish that one off, pushing in the mid lane at the same time. But Weibo, you give them an inch, they will take a mile. Mid lane in here goes down. The Shy does back off in the end with 10 to five now, an 8,000 gold lead, an in here in the mid lane, and Baron about to be on the map. Yeah, Weibo having a much more, I'd say, methodical game this time around uh, than in their game two. Again, there still have been some oversteps in places. Again, Ahn's been picked off quite a few times, but in this mid game, we've even seen them quite well. They didn't really care too much about this dragon going down right, because again, it doesn't it doesn't give you any damage, it doesn't give you any tankiness. Uh, Weibo still feel fine that they'll be able to take the fights going forward. SOFM buys time. Sure, three members get out, but two members still left in the fray for the side of OMG. So nice job by SOFM to kind of cut around, zone them out, and disregard the dragon. And just say, hey, you know, we don't care about that. We'll get a better position for the fight and just win the game before Soul or Elder even matters. Oh, wait, we're just going to start this Baron off by themselves. Quite happy to just go for it and burn it down. I mean, you've got a Jinx there, so they can take it exceptionally quickly. The Jinx with four items, almost five at this point. Angel has Destiny if he wants to try and force a play here. The Rapid Fire Cannon available for a gold card. And so FM threatening. And OG, they're on the wrong side once again. <laughs> this is a, a tough position for them. I think they're trying to stop waves as Destiny comes on through. OG just staying as a fight, trying to make sure nobody can be picked off by Angel. But Destiny going to be used to port back to this mid lane once again. Deny entry, deny the proxying that OMG are trying to pull off here. Weibo grouping up though, protecting their minions. A shock blast doing half of the health. There's a rocket as well. Aki barely surviving. He now goes down the Realm Warp out, but it's only one person to escape. And the rest 
of the team will be fodder for Weibo. Cream tries to escape, but the gold card stops him. Not a singular casualty for Weibo as they take over. Yep, OMG, they try to be cheeky, stopping those waves, but they give a window for Weibo to find the team fight. And now Weibo, their momentum's not gonna slow down. They're gonna make their way towards an eight series win streak. They certainly are. Game number two left us scratching our heads, but game number three practically immaculate from the side of Weibo. The first and third game of every series seems to be their forte. A 12,000 gold lead as they finish this series out and continue their win streak at the top of the table. Yeah, <laughs> just thinking about their trajectory in terms of how these series play out is... Uh, Pretty funny. Again, our top our top two teams right now, Weibo and V5, do have uh, a lot of close shenanigans in their series, pushing them to game three. But we saw this game, Weibo change it up in draft. They go more towards playing around sides. They bring out the one three one. We see the uh, the double soul lane picks uh, in terms of like the destiny coming out. You use that to, to keep the shy's momentum going. 